So you're building your next big game in Gdevelop or you're new to Gdevelop and need some tips and tricks to facilitate state development, then this video is for you. In this video, I'm going to give you 10 tips which I can guarantee you will find useful while using the game engine. Before we begin, shout out to Arturo555 for providing most of these tips. I will leave his Twitter handle in the description of this video. You can check out his profile and follow. First on our list we have make use of the control key. There is a probability that this is how you add instances of an object into the scene. Now this is great when you have a small project but when you're working on a large project you would need this tip. On windows hold down control and click on an object to clone it. Here is a speed comparison between both methods. and control plus click wins. Make use of instance variables. It is important to keep your list of objects clean by removing the duplicates of objects. Take a look at this. This is a platformer game made in my Udemy course on how to make a game in develop, which you can check out, a link would be in the description. Now here I have 4 keys in the scene. But all four keys are from one object, with each object acting as a separate object, now that's possible with the use of an instance variable. Now with it, each key is assigned a particular variable value that can be used to identify it in the events. Now this saves you the stress of creating an object for each key, like this. Wow, this looks messy. Make use of the resource tab to remove unused objects. You can locate the resource tab in the project manager and then resources. In there you can go ahead and right click on the resource list at the bottom. You should see an option to remove resources with an invalid path and before that remove unused resources. It's a best practice to do this regularly especially before building your game as it would make your game load time much faster. Stop wasting time building some game mechanics. The GDevelop engine is bundled with a ton of ready-to-use extensions created by both the GDevelop staffs and the GDevelop community. These extensions can save you some time. Now take a look at this extension and how useful they are. The slide extension, this lets you draw a draggable slider the users can move to select a numerical value and we also have the flash extension well this will be useful in platformer games as it makes an object flash for a period of time you can go ahead and check the long list of extensions available before we continue if you find this video useful like the video and share it with some other to develop game developers they will appreciate it Make use of the mini instruction selector. Now this is a feature in the event which lets you open a mini version of the instruction selector. To do this, right click on the add condition or add action text. Select the object or condition and select a condition available for that object. You may need to set expressions for some other conditions. This also works in the actions. Sort in the instance panel. In the instance panel, you can sort objects based on their position, angle, layer, and set order. This can be done by clicking on the header. Objects are then sorted from the highest to lowest, or vice versa. At number 7, we have trigger events only when needed. You need to make sure you trigger events only when needed and only as many times as needed. For example, when you check collision, you need to consider using a timer to check collision every um, 0.2 seconds. This way, the collision check is going to be triggered only 5 times a second instead of 30 or 60 times. Also, try to avoid using Pixel Perfect's collision check-in as it is extremely resource hungry. For the most part, collision shapes and simple shapes should work just fine. 
but in case you need a complex shape, try to use a few polygons only. The fewer the polygons, the better the performance. Do not use huge images in your game. It is always a good practice to not use huge images in your game. Instead of scaling down big images, always make them just the right size to fit the game. Make use of GitHub for collaboration. When working on a game in a group, it's best to take advantage of GitHub. GitHub is a web-based interface that allows for real-time collaboration. GitHub encourages teams to work together. Now how can you use GitHub to collaborate? Well, you need to head over to this um, website, github.com, create a GitHub account, then create a repository. Um, you can go ahead and click on the Settings tab of your repository, um, then Collaborators, then search for GitHub users and add them by clicking Add. If you want to see a tutorial explaining how to collaborate on GitHub, you can go ahead and let me know in my comment section. If I see the request, I'll know it's important. And the final tip goes to the shape painter object. So to those of you who use the shape painter object in your game, um, if this is having an impact on your game performance, then this tip is for you. So what you need to do is to use an extension which is um, rendered to sprites. So what this would do is render the drawing of your shape painter object onto the sprite. So I'll show you how to do this. The first thing you do is install the extension. You can do that in the project manager and extension. I have mine installed already, so this is it, the render to sprite. Back. Now in here I have two objects. I have the shape painter object and the sprite object. I'll go through them. Both objects have no behaviors and this is just a random image I have here. So apply. I have it in the scene already. And we also have a shape painter object. Our shape painter also does not have any behavior and it just has the default properties apply so to do this into our new scene events we go ahead and add an action to our shape painter to draw a shape so the shape we'll be drawing is a star you can go ahead and use any um, shape you want so for this i'll say my center x position i'll set this to 200 my y position of center i'll set this to 200 the number of points of the star, I'll set this to 5 and radius, you can go ahead and just set this to whatever you want. So for the radius, I think 100 or 200 would do the inner radius, I'll set this to about um, 50 and rotation, maybe 5, 5 would do and OK. So if you preview this and we have our star right there, so our star is drawn there, now we need to make use of this extension so close this add an action and let's go ahead into order actions sprite snapshot and render an object into a sprite the object to render would be the shape painter and the sprite to render to would be our sprite go ahead and click ok and let's add a condition to ensure this only trigger once you can preview this we have our shape painter star on our sprite object. Now we need to clear this shape painter object. So we can go ahead, close this, add an action, and go ahead and delete this and search for the delete action. So delete the specified objects. Okay. And preview. And there you go, you have the star. So that's how it's done. And this is going to improve the performance of your game when working with the shape painter object. And do remember, you can use whatever image you want in here. I can go ahead and change this image, just show you, delete, add. Okay, apply and preview this. And there you go, so the image used does not affect the shape. So thanks for watching. If you found these tips and tricks useful, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. I'll see you guys in my next video.